Welcome to Mallory Park in the heart of Leicestershire. It's the final round of the championship. This is Thundersport GB. <laughs> Hundred Championship, which is the tuned engine. That was won by Tom McHale uh, a round or so ago. We have the Super Stock 600 Championship. That was won by Danny Murphy. But the pair of them, Tom McHale and Danny Murphy, were fighting it out for the honours overall in the RLR Motorsports.com 600 Sportsman Elite. Very little between them as we come into this weekend, but unfortunately, before we even got racing, as we just see them coming into Turn 1, that's Joe Collier taking the lead. Unfortunately for Tom McHale, he aggravated an injury um, servicing his mum's car and couldn't make it here this weekend. He was just a few points, 22 points behind Danny Murphy. What that effectively means is that without even turning a wheel, Danny Murphy is crowned the champion overall and will be sporting the number one plate out there. You should be able to miss him. He's on the Superstock 600 bike. So congratulations to Danny Murphy. Commiserations to Tom McHale. Uh, that is desperately unlucky to be doing something like that into the final round. Nevertheless, we still have a big race on here. Some big names in this final race of the season. Joe Collier, uh, a winner in this race at Mallory Park here last year. He leads uh, Luke Stapleford. And oh, what? that's a crash there. That's number 224. Barry Teasdale going down. Uh, looked like a high side out of the bus stop chicane. He's got up and he's OK. But Barry Teasdale down and out of this race. A rider that uh, has just about wrapped up the uh, HMT pre-national sport, which is effectively a rookie class in Thundersport this year. Back to the front we go, and it's uh, Joe Collier, number 11, leading. Uh, Joe Collier on the Fancraft Triumph was uh, a pretty super team runner just a few years back. He started out in 2009 having been a schoolboy supermoto champion and he's up ahead of British super sport runner Luke Stapleford and Joe is fresh full of confidence having taken a podium in uh, the British Superbike Championship a couple of weeks ago at Brands Hatch. Third place there is Dan Hegarty, then it's Carl Wilkes and Richard McNeil. Richard McNeil on a Formula 600 tuned machine but it's not as tuned as some of the others ahead of him. That's uh, number eight machine there, 81, sorry, of Luke Stapleford. He's just put like a little bit of tape as a number one next to his regular number eight. Um, that is a, a tuned Super Sport engine up against the Super Stock engine here, the Vancraft Triumph of Joe Collier. But Mallory Park isn't really a speed demon circuit, so to speak. They go through, Dan Hegarty there in third, Wilkes fourth, Danny Murphy now in fifth place. Further back, we've got Daniel Stamper there on the Kawasaki. Connor Tag, who's doing very well, and uh, is looking like uh, being set for third place overall in the championship. A good first season on 600 for him. Back to the front we go, though. Not a lot to split. The profile logistics Kawasaki in second, and Luke Stapleford as he tries desperately to get past Joe Collier on the Van Kraar Triumph. Really hot into turn one there, Joe Collier. And I almost thought, we were going to lose him for a minute there. You could hear the knee slider scraping away as he goes through turn one, really pressing. I can tell you that the lap record has been obliterated, absolutely obliterated. Uh, once owned, shall we say, by Sam Hornsey, 52.5. It's a 52 flat now, 
They are the sort of times we expect to see the 1,000cc bikes go around here. They are really, really quick. And the Super Stocks, well, that's been beaten by 1.3 seconds. Incredible stuff here, uh, such as the talent across the field in this championship. If you look down uh, further back through the field, and you consider that the actual Formula 600 runner-up of last year, Richard McNeil, is struggling uh, a little bit, really. And there's a change for the lead. Luke Stapleton does take the lead into Gerrard. And uh, Richard McNeil is struggling a little bit. He's outside the top five, struggling with setup this weekend. Ross Ashman is uh, a decent rider. He's been struggling down outside the top five also. Adam Shelton, remember him? As a change again for the lead, Joe Collier goes up. Yes, Adam Shelton has taken to a Suzuki 600. And uh, I think he's also struggling with setup issues, but he is a quick rider. These guys at the front are in a different league, though, as they scrap away for the lead, and it's going to be all cutting off the nose there. Luke Stapleford around the outside now of Joe Collier. What a race this is at the front of the Sportsman Elite 600, sponsored by rlrmotorsports.com. Great championship, this. And it just goes to show what an... Oh, and that's a rider down. That is a rider down. Is that Daryl Harrison that's fallen? Daryl, not a massive fan of this uh, Mallory Park circuit. He's not had a lot of luck here over the years. As that looks like Michael Golden, who's in 16th place, being lapped by the two leaders. Further back in third, Dan Hegarty having a bit of a lonely race. But... Uh, lapping at the 53s and then there's a decent scrap going on further behind <laughs> uh, one of the riders just having to sit up there we've got to Kyle Wilkes, Danny Murphy, Connor Tag all going well we lost Jamie Morris a little bit earlier as well and lap two number 199 Jamie Morris has gone down somewhere but back to the front we go Joe Collier it is that leads on the drive short shifting out of the bus stop and uh, it's given him plenty of drive onto the start finish straight but Luke Stapleford well whatever happened on that last lap he certainly lost out a couple of tenths the pro far logistics Kawasaki rider he came here last year to race in the race of the year and was actually giving both Sam Lowe's and James Ellison a good run for his money uh, around this Mallory Park circuit until he unfortunately fell there is number 80 and number 22 it's Daniel Stamper and number 22 Richie McNeil last year's runner up Richie hoping to test the entire championship again next year but Joe Collier still leads number 11 defending his line into Shaw's hairpin and just behind him there Luke Stapleford and any gap that Joe had has now disappeared and around they go Devil's Elbow onto the start finish straight now to tick off another lap and there is Joe's uh, pit bull there's Hegarty in third Kyle Wilkes number 32 there in fourth Michael Golden is being lapped number 88 Kyle oh, Wilkes has had such a good end to the season. The uh, all-stash rider on the Blink League on limited Kawasaki. Really good stuff and it'll be interesting to see what he gets up to next year. Back to the front we go. Collier it is that still leads from Luke Stapleford. Look at the gap they've got over the field there. That's oh, well over 10 seconds. Back to number eight, Dan Hegarty. Dan who, when he has been entering the Thumbsport rounds this year, he's usually been on the podium. And up until the midway point of the season, was very much a title contender along with Danny Murphy, Andy Lawson and Tom McHale. And Tom McHale will be watching this. And I'm sure he can't bear to watch. There's been a change for the lead once again as Luke Stapleford has managed to get out ahead of Joe Collier now. And they've got a back marker between them also. All up the inside for Joe Collier as they head around Gerrard's. This never-ending right-hander. They're winding on the power as they head onto the Stevie straight. And Joe can't really afford to let Luke get himself more than a half a second lead because effectively he has the more powerful machine. But he uh, can't really use all of it around Mallory Park. And Luke's already proven in the GP1 race that he's more than capable of riding any bike around this circuit. Further back, that's still a battle for fifth, sixth, and seventh. Connor Tag, Daniel Stamper, and Lee Williams, another rider that's uh, a newcomer this year, doing very well. Luke Stapleford there, number 81 on the black profile logistics Kawasaki, now getting down to business. He's just posted a 52 flat, last that flag is out, and it looks like he's done the business on Joe Collier. I don't think Joe's going to be able to catch that one up. Joe Collier's now coming up to put a lap on Jody Chalk. Jody uh, in the points at the moment, doing well on the triumph. There's Luke Stapleford. Around they come onto the Stevie straight, and Joe Collier 
hard on the brakes. He's really traveling. Oh, just too much speed into Edwinas, and Joe Collier's lost the front end. He runs over to the bike, but uh, you won't be remounting that, I'm afraid, Joe. He's gone down and out of the race, and I think it's just he was trying to do too much in this last lap and maybe should have set off the second. It did look like he was heading into Edwinas with a bit too much speed. But that is it for Joe Collier. That's curtains for this race, and that means that Luke Stapleford is going to go on and win this race. And uh, well, across the line, he comes to take victory by an enormous amount. Enormous, we're still waiting for second place. And it is going to be Dan Hegarty, but by some 23 seconds behind. Doesn't really tell the whole story of the race. Carl Wilkes finishes third, but more importantly, wins the Superstock race. Danny Murphy, of course, the champion. And we'll catch up with him in a minute. Superstock top three there, Wilkes, Murphy and Tag. And the 4 minute 600 top three, Stapleford, Dan Hegarty and Lee Williams. Good effort from Lee. A confirmation of the championship overall. Danny Murphy, the champion on a super stock fight ahead of Tomic Hale and Connor Tapp. Race winner, the super stock 600 race, Kyle Wilkes. A good win for you there. Can you tell us about the race? Yeah, yeah I was in second um, most of the race. Uh, I had a bit of a moment on like third lap. I caught my knee on the grass and uh, that put me behind Dan Hegarty, um, and uh, yeah, just second in the whole, whole race until uh, Joe, unfortunately, binned it on the last lap. So yeah, it was a good race, enjoyed it. Uh, had to work hard to keep uh, Danny Murphy behind me, so yeah, no, it was good, enjoyed it. We hope to see you back up here again. Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, I'd just like to thank my family, uh, my grandparents, Lee, the mechanic, all at Primo Bournemouth Kawasaki, uh, Glenside Finance, um, yeah, probably forgotten some people, but yeah, that's about it, I think. And winner of the Formula 600 race, Luke Stapleford. You're not normally here at Thundersport, but you've come in and took the win. Yeah, it's uh, nice to come at the end of the year after a long season with BSV um, to come and have a bit of fun and, and have a run around with the guys. But fair play to Joe, he, he pushed me all the way there. It was a real good race, really enjoyed it. Well done. And any sponsors you'd like to thank? Just everyone involved, really. Shoei Helmets, all the guys from the team, Profile Kawasaki, everyone that's helped me along this season. It's been hard, so... And Superstock 600 champion, Danny Murphy, overall champion now in the elite class. You must be over the moon. Yeah, it's, um, it's great to take the two championships. I'd have liked to, um, to have raced it out with Tom. Fortunately, he's not here. But, yeah, it's been a good year. been very consistent. Stayed on it quite a lot, so that's good. All right, for now, have you got any sponsors you'd like to thank? Yeah, I'd um, like to thank my dad and Graham for, for a great season. Um, uh, Brent Millage at Kepston Limited. Uh, Mark and Alan at EPDL, Host Property Management. Heath Butler, he's been a great support as well over the years. Um, Fleet Graphics, Dave Tully and Combe, Dave Bostock at Mac Tools, Dane Easy Manchester and Nitro. Well, that's it from today and that's it for 2012. A great season had by all. We'll be back in 2013. Brands Hatch in March. From myself, Steve Day and from Grace Webb, it's goodbye. Sports bikes, you say what's any bike, it makes no odds. We will give you what you need, best price always guaranteed. Come to us and get a quote, you'll be singing no for no. Walk away with cash to spend on anything you want, my friend. Bike insurer, bike insurer, bike insurer. Get the cheapest bike insurance, guaranteed, only from the bike insurer. Final race of 2012, the RLR Motorsports.com 600 Sportsman Elite, a championship that sees Formula 600s, or tuned 600, should I say, up against super stock bikes. And already we have a champion, and we'll mention him in a moment. Meanwhile, on the grid there, Joe Collier, number 11. Remember him? Well, an ex Thundersport rider that has been doing well in British Championship. Kyle Wilkes, a super stock rider that has been really on song at the end of this season. And last year's runner up. Number there, number 22, Richie McNeil. And uh, we're missing uh, the pole man, not on the grid for this one. Luke Staples, so he's not had on the circuit. So it means it's going to be a fascinating race at the front. And will Joe Collier have it all his own way? And as I go back to mention the champion, well, unfortunately, Tom McHale, who was fighting Danny Murphy for this championship, 
aggravated an injury servicing his mum's car and couldn't make it this weekend, therefore handing the championship over to Danny Murphy, who had already clinched the Superstock crown. And you'll see him there just going through with a number one plate on his Yamaha R6. Danny Murphy has won this year's championship and gets to go out there and have some fun. Number of riders missing from the grid in this race, so many have packed up and gone home already. As you just see a glimpse there of number 50, Sam Thompson going through, but it's Collier that leads. Wilkes in second, Connor Tag third, and then it's uh, this year's champion alongside last year's runner-up side by side there, Danny Murphy number one, and number 22, Richie McNeil, the Ulsterman. Around Gerrards and onto the Steppy Straight, Joe Collier number 11 on the Vancraft Triumph 600, rider from Colville, an ex-schoolboy supermoto champion. Carl Wilkes in second there, uh, rider from Warsash on the Blink Legal, Kawasaki, doing very well for himself this year. Number 34, that's John Dean on the Bob Scott bike Suzuki. And there's not a lot stopping Joe Collier at the moment, lap times wise, he's already down into the 53s. And this lap looks like being possibly even better than that. Um, that record's been smashed this weekend already. Across the line they go, and Collier just puts in a time of a 52.7. Astonishing stuff here on the Triumph. No doubt you'll get a glimpse of Joe in a few British Championship rounds next season. Saw him on the podium at Brands Hatch a couple of weeks ago. And this man here in second, Carl Wilkes, in the National Super uh, Superstock 600 race, actually just missed out on the podium. And in third there, number 100 on the AL joinery Yamaha R6, that's Connor Tag, who all season long has been getting used to the transitional change of a 600, having obviously ridden and finished second in last year's 450 championship. He is really looking good for a championship run next year, Connor Tag. There's Danny Murphy, number one. Double championship winner this year. This really has, if you look at all of the Thunder Sport championships, the GP1's a difficult one. Uh, 450, a hard championship to win. Most of them difficult, but this really is probably one of the hardest championships to win in Thunder Sport GP, especially this year. And on a super stock bike up against uh, far superior machinery, it's in terms of uh, speed and brake horsepower. Danny Murphy has done a superb job there, number one. Danny out there on the Yamaha R6, sponsored by Kepston and EPDL. But it's the battle for second that we're looking at there. Further back, that's number 49, Lee Williams. Now, if you've been watching our pre-national Sport 600 races, Lee is a newcomer this year. Another former supermoto rider from Liverpool who won the pre-national rookie races and is currently up in the top five or six of this one. He's on a Formula 600 bike, so he's on tuned machinery, unlike the top four here. So at the moment, Lee Williams is on for a Formula 600 class win, which is remarkable. And just behind him is Richie McNeil, and then it's Barry Teasdale, another, uh, the actual HMT pre-national sport champion of 2012. Good going. Now, we just heard there a little bit of a moment. Was that... I heard a bike revving up at Shaw's hairpin. I wonder if there'd been a problem for Joe Collier, the race leader. Joe Collier does go through. Still second for Kyle Wilkes. Danny Murphy third. Connor Tag in fourth. The top four here. All ex Aprilia Super Teen riders. As you look further back, that's number 72. Daryl Harrison, ex Thunder Sport 500 uh, runner. Absolutely hates this place. Um, not, and that's not down to the fact that he just doesn't like the area, it's down to the fact that he's had some terrible and rotten luck here at Mallory Park, but Daryl Harrison out there on the JDR Performance Suzuki from Poole has not had much luck at Mallory and therefore doesn't really like the circuit very much. But it's Kyle Wilkes here in second, ahead of Danny Murphy. So the top four are all Superstock 600 bikes. Joe Collier is away with it. We're not seeing him at the moment because he's got an enormous lead as Danny Murphy thinks about the move on Kyle Wilkes there for second place. There is Connor Tag, number 100. Rider from Reading. Trying to keep up with these guys up ahead of him. And there's number 93, Dale Thomas. Currently up in the top 10. He's, well, he's actually 11th at the moment. 
so not quite in the top ten. Down into Edwin as they go, and Danny Murphy makes a move up the inside of Kyle Wilkes. Nice move there from Danny, and Kyle just left the door open a little bit too wide there. And Danny Murphy proves why he is the champion this year, takes that spot happily, but Kyle Wilkes is fighting back late on the breaks from Kyle. A great block pass made on the champion there from Kyle Wilkes and moves back up into second place ahead of Danny Murphy. So it's not over and done just yet, although the race leaders 10, 11 seconds further up the road. 52, late 52 is Joe Collier's doing. That's well under the lap record that was set before. There's 93 and number seven. Dale Thomas and Jody Chalk doing very well. They are looking to take some big points away from this race. And there, finally, we get a shot at your race leader. Um, well, the Vancraft Triumph rider is so far ahead, but this is a good scrap for second we're watching here. Carl Wilkes still just holding on to it from Danny Murphy. You can't count out Connor Tang in fourth either. Connor's just been doing everything he can, really, to keep up with them. Back to the front, we see Joe Collier. Number 11, through the bus stop chicane. And down onto the start finish straight. It's still Wilkes in second, ahead of the champion, Danny Murphy. And we've certainly got to send our respects to um, Tom McHale. Hopefully he'll, he'll get better soon and we'll see him next year. There's Sam Thompson, Tom McHale, who finished second in the championship. He won the Formula 600 championship, though, I should point out. Sam Thompson there, we just saw number 50, was up in the top 10. Good effort from him as this fight for a second continues. The last race of 2012, and Danny Murphy wants to finish in second. Championship doesn't matter anymore. It's all about this race on the screen. Danny Murphy thinking about going up the inside. Oh, there's not enough room there. Cole Wilkes had already chucked it in, and luckily for Danny Murphy, he can breathe a sigh of relief because he just managed to go through without getting his nose chopped off. That's just given an opportunity for Connor Tag to close in, but can he close in enough? Across the line they go to complete another lap. It's still Joe Collier that has an enormous lead out front here. Number 11 on the Van Craft Triumph. Flicks left and then right without Luke Stapleford for company. This has been easy for Joe. It's a circuit that he's always run very well at. This is the fight that we wanted to see for second. Wilkes still from Murphy, and Connor Tag in fourth. Just, he's just not quite close enough to make a move, Connor Tag, at the moment. He's uh, lapping, well, it's pretty much the same times, but he needs one of these two to make a mistake if he's gonna have a, a sniff at that podium. There is Kyle Wilkes, you see that clear visor, you see his eyes as he exits Devil's Elbow and makes his way onto the start-finish straight. Still Collier that leads. He's putting a lap on that look like 76 Dan Shaler and that 72 Daryl Harrison. Going through there, 194 is Bill Callister. Nice to see Bill up there doing well. Another rider from Poole, a rider from the Navy. And Bill is going to take some points here. We've lost Ross Ashman from somewhere. Ross Ashman has gone missing on lap 13. So I'm not sure what's happened to him as we see the last lap flag now. And once more we pan back to Sam Thompson and it's thanks to Ross Ashman getting out of this race. Sam Thompson is now promoted up into ninth place. Just ahead of Dale Thomas. There's Jodie Chalk. She's moved into 11th and she's about to be lapped by Joe Collier. Both of these riders form a super teams. Female rider, Jody, out there on the Restorer Roof Pro Scott Triumph. And up the inside, nice and tidy from Joe Collier to Triumph. You hear that zingy sound of the Triumphs as they make their way through the bus stop chicane. It's been too easy for Joe Collier. The final race of the year goes to him. He sticks his leg out and celebrates the win. Collier wins the rlrmotorsports.com 600 Sportsman Elite. Carl Wilkes, an excellent second ahead of Danny Murphy, the champion, and Connor Tag fourth. And Lee Williams wins the Formula 600, finishing fifth. Superstock 600 podium then. Now you see Collier, Wilkes, and Murphy. 
and in the Formula 600, it's Lee Williams, McNeil and Barry Teasdale. Lee Williams, Formula 600 winner. You've definitely had a good weekend. Yeah, I've had a, a good weekend, yeah. Won three nationals and then third in the first Formula and I've won the second Formula, so yeah, I'm really happy. Have you got a highlight of your weekend? Um, just to show that I've, I've progressed all the year and I'm now starting to get there and hopefully next year I'll be there a little bit more and be able to be a bit more up the front. Definitely. Any sponsors you'd like to thank? Um, just everyone you can see on me, Viv. Um, everyone has helped me out this year. Dave, Ancient Riding School, bought me some tyres. Uh, Mum and Dad, Mike from MW Racing, uh, Rock Oil Show, ECD. Just everyone for supporting me throughout the year and Thundersport for doing a good end of season for me. And uh, just like to dedicate that win to Jim Stock, who sadly passed away on the Monday after Cadwell. So that's for Jim from Slingshot Racing. Thank you, Lee. And winner of the Superstock 600s, Joe Collier. You're not normally with us at Thundersport, but you've come and stole the lead. Yeah, well, it's just a nice way to end the season. After a good weekend last weekend at Brands with BSB, it's just nice to come and end the season on a high. Yeah, it's real good. And how do you find Mallory here with us? Yeah, it's real good. It's not been with you for a year. It's just nice to come back, see, see a few faces I've not seen in a while. Yeah, it's good to be back. And any sponsors you'd like to thank? All my sponsors, Auto World Group, uh, my dad at MC Motors, just everyone. I'd like to say a big thanks to Andy Cagle at uh, Bancraft for helping me out this year and just making it all, making me get there. Well done on your win. Cheers, thank you.